We're driving a 2023 Kia Sportage. Yes, a car from the future. Coming up, we're going to unravel a little further a mystery that popped up in a review a couple of weeks ago. But first, information explosion. As you don't know, the Kia Sportage is a compact SUV. It's also the longest running nameplate in the Kia repertoire of vehicles. It was introduced in 1995. Let us begin with interior. Interior thoughts? I think the Sportage is stylish. I like the shape of the vents. I like this material here that's not I mean, actual texture, but it, it appears that way. <laughs> the door handles have an unusual shape to them. Everything in here is kind of specific. Yes. Like the vent has that shape. And it's like, I don't know why it's shaped like that, but it does. <laughs> They've made choices. It's like an actor makes choices. Yeah. They have made some choices. There is a lot of shiny black plastic, which is is filled with fingerprints. The fingerprints uh, collection abilities of this car uh, take that CSI <laughs> and this black uh, plastic here, it's perfectly positioned to, um, when uh, the sun is at certain angles, shoot right into my eye. I literally had to put my hand here, just thus adding more thumb and fingerprints uh, <laughs> because it was so blinding, uh, even with my beautiful flying eye sunglasses on. Wow. My exclamation was for your integration of the um, advertisement, not for sympathy for your predictable commit. Never mind. You really just trailed out there, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> See, commitment, not committed. <laughs> and you know, that's the kind of commitment you can only get with uh, Flying Eyes eyewear as well. Uh, <laughs> Can we talk briefly though about the uh, audio slash climate controls? It alternates between being the HVAC controls or the audio controls. This button switches between them. And it's not even a button, it's just part of the flat panel. So yeah. you have to aim correctly. Though I will note that there's a different beep for which function you're using. Audio, climate. Audio, climate. That is helpful, but I have a very But not so helpful that you didn't, that you even noticed at this point. <laughs> I kept forgetting which system was active, so I'd attempt to turn the volume down, I'd turn the temperature way down, and then I'd just be mashing buttons. I think it's cool because they're using a very small amount of space and it creates an uncluttered design. And I think the logic is climate control, it's automatic, so you're probably just gonna set your temperature to a comfortable temperature and then uh, leave it on um, the audio controls. That said, I did the exact same thing that you did several times where I'm like, oh, let's turn that audio down, and then the temperature goes down to like the uh, lowest possible settings so I don't know what do you guys think about this as an interface you know I do have a solution to that though what is it get the base LX trim it doesn't have oh. that it has the Steiner climate interface and a different audio setup with knobs let's talk about space in that there is a lot of it sitting in the second row behind my preferred front seat position my uh, knee room is outstanding same thing with headroom I'm very comfortable and I could even sit in that middle position the little hump in the middle there is pretty low and very wide and flat, so you can set your feet on top of it without issue. I love the recline and a lot of um, different angles to choose from. Yeah, this is a very comfortable vehicle by size and functionality. And then behind that, we've got cargo space, 39.6 cubic feet. That is with the floor in the lowest position. If you move it up to its highest position, then you've got a little extra underfloor storage there. So you've got releases in the back, so the seats just flip down. and. Uh, in the underfloor area, if you pull off the little side covers, there's a wide enough space to put the cargo cover down there. What about getting the car seat in and out? The latch points don't have any sort of cover, so it's very easy to install. The door opening was adequate. There's a integrated step that was very handy. Kiddo, any issues getting in and out of this thing? A windowless white van. Whoa, you did spot a windowless <laughs> white van. No issues getting in and out. One other detail that I think is really cool is that we live in a, um, a mountain community where we'll have snow and mud during the winter time. And that stuff collects on the lower portion of the cars that we drive. And what's great about the Sportage's design is that the doors cover the sills. So the doors get covered in mud and snow. And then when you open the door, the sill is clean. So uh, your pants or whatever you're wearing don't get covered in mud. 
As for safety, neither the IIHS or NHTSA have yet to review the 2023 Kia Sportage, but it does have six airbags and a generous suite of active driver assists, including lane keeping assists and automatic emergency braking with pedestrian and cyclist detection. Uh, family, what do we think? Is the Kia Sportage family friendly? Yay! Family friendly. Yes, very family friendly. Rear window test. All the way down. All the way down. <laughs> Armrest test. I'm driving in a comfortable eight and four, and my elbows are firmly on both the inboard and the outboard armrests. They're not squishy, but they're also not abrasive. They're like firm and supportive, but yielding. Uh, I'm gonna go full marks inboard and full marks outboard. Nicely done, Sportage. Hey, have you subscribed to our channel yet? If you haven't, please do. Uh, if you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos um, where we review cars as a family, plus the occasional helicopter video, more of those might appear in your feed if you'd like to subscribe. Moving onward to style. Let me quickly thank the sponsor for today's video, Flying Eyes Sunglasses. These are not like normal sunglasses. They're made out of a special material called resilamide that makes them very durable and bendable. You can do things like that, and that enables them to be exceptionally light and exceptionally thin here on the temples. And that is really helpful because then you can put them under a headset when you're, let's say, flying a helicopter, or you can put it under a helmet when you're on a motorcycle or driving a race car, and it just makes them extremely comfortable in your day-to-day life. Evie wears the ophthalmic line, which has her prescription in it, and they've got a really cool feature as well. They have removable magnetic tinted lenses, so you can either wear them outdoors or inside, where you spend most of your time. Are you ready to live an action-packed lifestyle inside, and you need aviation-grade eyewear to do so? If so, click the link in the description below, use the promo code MICA to save 10% on flying eyes. I don't know if it's the particular paint color or the design, but I find the Sportage very visually striking and appealing. Mm. I like how these sides have like an organic curvy quality to them, but also accentuated by some very crisp lines on the rear view mirror and the hood and along the side. And I love the diamond pattern on the three-quarter window. Let's not forget the boomerang LED elements on the uh, nose. I don't know if there's many parts of the outside that have not been styled. Yeah, that's a really good way to put it. The danger is over styling the vehicle, and yet I don't know how it's going to age, but in the Sportage's case, I think right now I really like how it looks. You mentioned the shadow matte gray paint, and I agree, it's super cool. It's like a little bit sparkly, but it's got that matte finish. It's only 600 bucks, oh. so that's pretty cheap for a very distinct uh, paint scheme. I'm going to sneeze now. <laughs> But sneezing will not stop me from telling you that it requires special care. You are required to wash it by hand with soft mitts. You can't use any wax or anything like that because that's bad for the paint. And you have to use matte specific cleaners to clean the car. For how we live in such a, um, a potentially messy environment uh, and with no time for washing cars, we probably wouldn't go with this, but you probably should. What do you guys think? Do you like the styling of the Kia Sportage? If yes, if no, tell us in the comments section. If you're curious what we're doing between YouTube videos, you can give us a follow over on Instagram, in motion. Driving the Sportage home on the freeway, I noticed that the suspension felt to me a little underdamped, which is that you'd hit a bump and it would kind of be bouncy and it didn't feel like the suspension was necessarily as controlled as I would prefer. That said, I do find uh, interior noise uh, to be uh, quite manageable, and I like driving it around. There's a uh, light, uh, easy quality to the steering. Um, it feels not necessarily sporty, but uh, casual and agile. As noted in the information explosion, we're driving the hybrid version. One thing I like about the hybrid, it doesn't feel like a hybrid. If you drive like a Toyota hybrid, um, it's got what's called an eCVT. And basically there's a combination, they have an electric motor and uh, that changes the ratios in relation to the engine. So you'll have this when you accelerate, it sounds like the engine is racing. Whereas this version of a hybrid is teamed with a six speed automatic transmission. So it feels very normal to a uh, traditional car. It just happens to be electrified as well and gets great fuel economy and you also get that instantaneous electric torque when you accelerate. For a hybrid, I think the Sportage operates very seamlessly. I really enjoy driving it. That's what I think, but what a sweetie think. Evie's driving. <laughs>
Huh, that was weird. Uh, so <laughs> what do you feel when you drive the Sportage? I feel pretty comfortable. The brakes feel a little bit touchy when I'm slowing down, but I know that's really common in a hybrid. Yeah, sometimes hybrids, when they've got regenerative brakes and friction brakes and they're trying to merge those two forces, they can be a little bit weird. So I found the exact same thing, touchy mm. brakes that you would not have in the non-hybrid version. As for visibility, the pillars are thick, but not abnormally so. I do wonder if there was a GT40 over my right shoulder, if I'd be able to see it because the <laughs> windows are a little bit narrow. For the most part, uh, you can probably see around um, no worse than most cars. Last question, by size, does this feel manageable? Yes, I like a smaller vehicle and this is that. It's in the sweetie sweet spot? Yes. Cool, I think you're having a pretty positive experience here. Enough of that. Overall, I think the Kia Sportage is a very nice driving SUV. I would happily daily it. Let me very quickly thank the folks who support us over on Patreon. Thank you, patrons. We love uh, hanging with you guys over there, and we love giving you guys early access to our videos. You guys are the best. Onward to Emotion Factor. What's the Emotion Factor here? It feels very futuristic from like the 80s futurism of the infotainment system to the future futurism <laughs> of the exterior. I love the new logo they have, by the way, the oh, yeah. Kia emblem that they have on the front. They've taken a category that's um, traditionally been defined by pragmatism, and then they've infused a ton of like visual interest that makes it feel like a much more emotional kind of purchase. What do you guys think? Are you feeling the emotions here? If you're feeling emotionally drawn to buy a Kia Sportage of your very own, I'm guessing you're gonna need to sell your car first. If you're curious what your current car is worth or how much you should pay for your next Kia Sportage, click the link in the description below and let Kelly Blue Book be your pricing guide. Continuing forward to remarks. Remark number one, infotainment. This is the larger 12.25 inch screen, uh, which comes on every trim except the base model. The base model is an eight inch screen. And as we've talked about in many Kias, the base eight inch unit for any Kia will have wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. And then when you go to the larger screen, 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 I sounded like the guy who does Mawage in uh, The Princess Bride. Uh, when you move to the larger screen, uh, you'll notice that uh, you have to have a wire to um, get your uh, phone connected via um, smartphone integration, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It is what it is. How do you find the interface? The interface looks awesome. I do find the icons identically styled, but the menus are well laid out. Yeah, a little bit of distinction with colors would make it less visually appealing, but more functional. Exactly. In total, I think this works well. Let's move on to what we teased in the very beginning of the video, which is that we're going to unravel a little bit further an automotive mystery that emerged a few weeks ago. We were driving the Kia K5, and I noticed that on the steering wheel controls, every little switch here is textured except for the track switch. And I, I wondered, is this a mistake? Did they put the wrong switch in here? Who are you? Here we are in another Kia and it's the exact same thing. So now we know this is intentional. So the next question is why? Why is it like this? What is it about switching your track forward and back that uh, demands you not have a textured switch? I'm gonna dig into this, but if you know the answer to why this one switch is untextured, please tell us in the comments. A couple more interesting um, elements of the Sportage. Uh, it's got um, super fancy cup holders. I like that it makes this space usable for something long that you want to put there, or if you're using it for a cup holder, you can pop them out. Do you notice anything odd about the windshield? No. Well, that's because you have bad vision, <laughs> but uh, if you have really excellent vision and you look very, very closely, you might see that integrated into the windshield is a small network of wires that squiggle back and forth. Can you see them? Maybe. <laughs> It's kind of a neat thing. It heats the windshield, which would be really helpful in our wintry climate up here. However, when I see it, I can't unsee it. Everywhere I go, I just see this like little um, lattice work of uh, electric wires. I'm sorry you're cursed with such excellent vision. It's my burden to bear. 
One other element that we really like that Kia incorporates into many of their vehicles is the lead vehicle alert system, where if you're stopped somewhere, it will let you know when the vehicle ahead is departing. So you'll never be the jerk that stops other cars from getting through the light because you were on Twitter. All right, everybody, strap in. We're gonna talk about the engine choices. Your basic Sportage has a 2.5 liter gasoline engine with an eight speed automatic transmission. You can get it in front wheel drive or all wheel drive. Then there's the 1.6 liter turbocharged hybrid like we're driving that comes with a six speed automatic. Front wheel drive is available on the LX, but if you go up to the higher trims, then it's all all wheel drive. And then there is a plug-in hybrid with that same 1.6 liter turbocharged engine and six-speed automatic transmission combination, which makes a little bit more horsepower. And as far as I can tell, only comes with all-wheel drive and it has a 34 mile EV range, which means for your daily commute, you might use zero gasoline. Speaking of all-wheel drive, if you wanna add it, it costs $1,800 and it adds a snow mode to the many drive modes, plus one inch in ride height. Sweetie. Yes. Can I give you a trim recommendation? Yes. Here it comes. I would recommend going with the EX trim that adds smart key access, which I won't live without, 18 inch wheels, the 12.3 inch infotainment screen, dual zone automatic climate control, faux leather, a power driver's seat, rear USB-C ports, blind spot warning, and safe exit assist, which warns you not to get out of the car if the car is approaching from behind. All of that is only $2,000 more than the base LX, though I would consider upgrading to the EX Hybrid, which comes standard with all-wheel drive. And if you compare it to the gasoline all-wheel drive version, it's only $1,200 more. And yet, it's 36% more efficient, which means you're gonna pay back that $1,200 premium really quickly, especially with fuel prices being so high. The one we're driving is the SX Prestige trim, and that has all the stuff like ventilated front seats, blind spot monitoring in the gauge cluster, a 360 degree camera system, a panoramic roof, and a smart lift gate that automatically opens after three seconds if you're standing near it with the key in your pocket. The last trim worth considering is the X-Pro, which is all new for 2023. It's a little bit more off-roady. It's got all-terrain tires. They've retuned the drive modes to accommodate those uh, BFG all-terrain tires. As for the competitive set, it is the names you would expect. Honda CRV, which is all new for 2023, Toyota RAV4, Ford Escape, and Subaru Forester, which we reviewed recently. If you'd like to see that video, click up here. Did we miss any remarks? If so, leave them in the comment section. Synopsis. In thinking about the essence of the Kia Sportage, it makes choices. That reminded me of Brad Pitt and how he always eats food in every movie. Have you noticed that? When yeah. he's acting, he's also eating food. That's an interesting choice. I don't know if it's a good choice or a bad choice, but it is specific. To me, the Kia Sportage is the Brad Pitt eating food acting of compact SUVs. If you'd like to see more of these kinds of videos where we review cars as a family, plus the occasional helicopter video, feel free to subscribe. If you'd like to see what we're doing between YouTube videos, you can give us a follow over on Instagram. Family, I think we did a pretty good job reviewing the Kia Sportage. May I have a five? That's a good five. A five, and you, come get your high five. Ah!